All right. Hey, this is uh, John Reed. I'm with Howard Beter from SDL. How's it going? Hey, John. How are you? <laughs> we, you and I are trying to grab this little quiet space, which isn't actually so quiet. So we'll see how our... Uh, let's hope it holds out. <laughs> let's see how we do. Uh, we're, we're coming at you guys live from the Argyle Digital Leadership, Digital Marketing Leadership yes. Forum. And you were actually on a on a panel earlier today. I was um, talking customer experience, amongst other things. Talking talking about the age of the customer. Yeah, the age of the customer, um, and customer experience, of course, is something that you guys are kind of focused on, and it's it's a term I kind of struggle with a lot because it seems like every single vendor on the planet is now specializing in customer experience, and I'm not even sure sure if I know what it means. So, well, what does customer what does that even mean? Sure. Um, it, it's true. Lots of organizations are out there today talking about customer experience. And I think organizations today have a number of different views. Customer experience to us is really about how customers are creating relationships with their customers, um, how they're able to help their customers move from anonymous to known, known to customer, and ultimately customer to advocate throughout that overall customer journey right. uh, with the technology, software solutions, and professional services to help get them there. And the advocate part is the sort of crown jewel, right? It's, it's like like a sort of the Apple fanboy. Or the, <laughs> your, your brand's equivalent yes. of that, right? Where it, customers are carrying your torch somehow. It, it is. It's almost yeah. like the old, uh, what is it, Perk commercial or Pro yeah, commercial. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, I told someone and they told someone and they told yeah, someone yeah. on and on and on, right? We ultimately are looking at how to create ultimate um, overall customer lifetime value. And the only way to create and maximize that lifetime value is to have that customer really become an advocate uh, and become a part of your marketing engine. Yeah, I, w when I'm willing to pimp a brand to my friends, I know I've crossed a certain threshold with a with a company because yes. my friends are like, God, really? But I'm like, no, I really like this, and so I'm going to push it to you. Yep. And that's a big shift from just quietly <laughs> consuming products. Oh, it's a, it's a huge shift. Right. Now, there's this other piece of it. I, I had to get some new winter boots. So I went down Northampton Ted's boot shop. Those guys have sold me the right boots for like 20 years. They know everything about the boot. They know everything about me. They always get it just right. But getting that at scale in a large company, I just that's one of the reasons why I struggle so much with customer experience as a concept, because to be honest with you, I don't really see it. I have certain companies that where I have certain really good experiences in, a, in, in isolation, but it's dependent on a couple individuals, and once they're displaced, I don't feel like I'm getting that experience. Like That same that level so of hard? intimacy anymore. Um, I mean, it's hard enough for... A number of reasons. I mean, one, maybe if we back up a second, when you start looking at the customers out there and you're looking at, you know, who they're actually engaging with and, and dealing with, you know, we all, we were chatting earlier about Apple, right? If we're engaging with Apple, we have some expectations of what we're going to get and they typically live up to them if we're doing that with amazon you know similar expectations for a great experience or google or disney um the challenge is we want that experience everywhere else we go right a and so and that's not as easy when it's when, not as when easy processes are more complex right when, when the because amazon's kind of like one click it's, it's harder for them to screw that exactly. up it, well, it's and, still, and, still a great thing that but they it, do. But it's but, taken them yeah. years to get there. Right, right. A and they've got the the customer history, right. you know, purchase history. They're capturing all that data. They've got the tools in place behind them. So now you've got, um, you know, the the ABC new online retailer that is trying to compete. In order for them to compete, they need to put in place some of those same basic tools so that their experience at least is somewhat as good uh, or comparable to what the best has. And in order to do that, they need to be able to acquire the right technology solutions to do so. Most organizations today are, are looking at, you know, maybe what's hot, what, what's being hyped the most out there and jumping at that. And many of them are running into, you know, year long implementations right. to try and get it right. 
Um, you know, what we've seen is that organizations need to start with a problem. They need to identify what that initial first step needs to be to get some success and get a site live very, very quickly. Um, you know, maybe they're starting with a website. Maybe they're starting with, with a campaign solution. But if it's going to be a year-long in implementation, it loses some of that momentum along the way. Right. And you need to have some of those small successes to build on to really increase the organization's um, mindset and really get everybody on board. Right. So... You're you're essentially advocating a process where you you start with some with a manageable piece that you can tackle that you know is going to consumable enhance, bite yes right, that's going to enhance a customer relationship in a particular area whether it's extending the online brand yes. or whatever in the online shopping experience or maybe it's adding a mobile component to that so you're picking one thing but you're also I think saying that it has to be part of a bigger context you can't just tackle these as one-off products and hope you're going to get correct the there, there's you've got to be looking at the bigger picture yeah. you've got to have an understanding of what that end-to-end -end customer yeah. journey will yeah. be so that it's not just putting in a, a wcm solution for the sake of a wcm solution how does that tie back to what's going to happen in sales what's what's going to happen from a, a marketing automation standpoint, what's going to happen from a customer support standpoint to really guide that customer through the whole journey. Right. Then as part of that, how does the data get shared across all those organizational right. silos so that when you have a view of that customer, that customer is the same customer in marketing and sales and in service. Right. And I'm glad you brought that up because one of the things they did today is they did a survey of marketing priorities for 2014. And the survey is ongoing throughout the day, but so far, uh, enhancing, leveraging data of customers is like by far out in the lead. It's like 60%, and the next closest response is under 20. Yep. You know, so, so the mar marketers and CMOs here are prioritizing this. Is that because without the data, they don't have a chance of offering the kind of personalized experience that you're talking about? With, without a doubt. I mean, I think one of the, the great quotes I heard today was we've moved from static marketing to real-time marketing. And we're very much in the real-time world. And real-time today doesn't mean that you know we're, we're necessarily doing all of our, our data crunching real-time, but that we've got the ability to provide not just a personalized experience, experience, a contextualized experience to that individual driven based off the, the customer history we have on them, based on the context of where they are, what device they're on, what is the mode of connectivity, um, every ambient uh, piece of data we have to drive that great experience. Yeah, and you know, I'm, I'm all for what you're saying, and I, and I, I think better customer experiences would make my life better for sure. Like I go back to this summer when I had a really good experience on a British Airways flight with the only exception that there was a refund issue on one of my tickets. And the refund process was kind of like an exercise in, in humiliation. Yes. And, uh, you know, like, for example, they couldn't process it at the airport. They refused to even talk to me about it. Like, I had to dial an 800 number back. And it's, you know, the kind of story I'm about uh -huh. to launch into. So it's the kind of thing where it's like, it's like it didn't even seem... It, it wasn't even like they had the data on me and decided I wasn't very important to them. It was like the data on who I was didn't even transfer properly from one person to the next. So to me, it's like this, at best, this is, a, is like a work in progress. At worst, it's kind of a utopia that yes. just isn't here. Well, I, I mean, but it needs to be because as a consumer, we get really frustrated by that. Right. And, and, you know, I use the same example with my cable company. Right. Um, you know, anytime there's a problem, right, from the time I call in to the time I talk to somebody that can fix it, I've given that same information three or four different times, right? We get irritated. We tell other people like I'm telling you now and you told me. So, so organizations recognize they have to fix that issue. Right. And, and, and that's why I believe we're hearing folks starting to talk about, you know, centralized customer repositories. Right. But, you know, I, I think quite honestly, 
for many of our competition, you know, it, it, that's a nice vision. Um, right. You know, having something right. that is in reality available today um, that customers can leverage today and are leveraging today, I think, really is helping our customers and gives them a unique advantage. Another interesting thing that's come up a lot is sort of breaking down the barriers like that that you can't just approach this from a marketing angle. It's a cross-organizational initiative. There's been a lot of talk around CMOs getting along with CFOs and for bridging that relationship. But then did a, sh a show of hands earlier today and the relationship with the marketers here and their IT departments is, is pretty bad as a group. That's got to get fixed, right? Because yeah, you can do a one-off cloud marketing initiative without involving your IT department. But to really get to the bottom of this personalized experience, yep. you, how can you do that without you, a relationship with IT? You can't. And, and, and so how, do you help your own customers understand that or work with that? Do they? Mo most definitely. I, I mean, marketing and IT need to work hand okay. in hand today. Just because the solutions are moving into the cloud doesn't right. mean IT is eliminated from the, from the proposition, right. right? There's still the need to integrate potentially um, your CXM cloud solution with your CRM cloud solution, right? How do you tie your marketing automation solution and your website to Salesforce, as one example? Um, that still has to happen and that's gonna involve IT. And so where what we've seen work well is when IT um, is very much still a, a key player in the overall decision. Um, IT should still buy off on the technology. Ultimately, they're going to be supporting it down the road. Right. Just, just because it's moving from a capital expense to an operational expense doesn't mean IT should be out of the, the picture at all. You know, that partnership needs to be strong. And I think, you know, on the other hand, IT has recognized that for them to be successful, they need to support the business. Right. And, I, and, and I'm seeing them step up to do so. All right, so one final question, then we'll get back, because we're kind of, I think we're playing hooky from the program, so we'll <laughs> probably get back in there. But so a lot of marketers that I've talked to are, they're getting some results, especially with some of the measurement tools they're using, and they're tying in social to lead campaigns and stuff. But the fact is, a lot of them, I think, are struggling with these issues, and and they don't have all the funding that they need, and 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 they want to understand how to get there. They don't always know what tools to use or the best approach. What what would you, if you were sitting down with one of your own prospects or customers, what would you say to them in terms of a manageable next step that could build some momentum around these issues? I realize that's going to vary from company to company, but how would you sure. approach that? You know, I think there's a, a number of ways to address that. I mean, one, you know, I'm in marketing. You know, yeah. mo most of us, in fact, all of us at this conference are in marketing, and we all have the same challenge as to how to do more with less or at least the same amount. Um, and to do so, you know, you, we really need to understand what's happening uh, with the campaigns we're running today, what's happening with um, in, in the social media space, what's happening across the customer journey. Right. There are new edge um, uh, analytic solutions now becoming available on the market that aren't just listening to what's happening in the social space. They're really able to start to look at the complete picture across the customer journey right. and be able to understand where the challenges and pain points are so that you are given a very specific target to address immediately. And based on that pain point, if, as an example, if they identify um, through the customer journey analytics that customer support is a red flag for your organization, um, that's something that you can create a customer loyalty program uh, or a campaign and focus and try and fix that issue very quickly and see a quick return on your investment and a quick success. And I think it, okay. my suggestion would be to start taking a look at those types of analytics tools today to really try and address uh, those concerns. All right, folks, there you have it. Let's put a wrap on it before we that annoying beep goes off again. Thanks a lot for joining me. All right, thank you. Take care. This has been fun.